Hey everyone, uh, this lecture will be based on the curriculum for the course I've created called Early Colonization of New England. This class is a 300 level undergraduate history class. Uh, during my course, this specific lecture would take place uh, during the beginning of the course as we are going to be discussing uh, the motivations for the Scrooby group or better known as the Pilgrims. Uh, We'll be discussing the uh, reasons for leaving Europe and coming to the New World, which takes place at the beginning of the historical narrative that this specific course covers. Uh, we'll also discuss the epidemic that would occur in southern New England before the arrival of these colonists that in many ways set uh, them up for success. On top of that, uh, the Pilgrims' very early experiences in Plymouth will be discussed. Uh, we will also discuss the commonly marginalized figure to Squantum, uh, or better known as Squanto, and also why his experiences and interactions with the pilgrims are so incredibly important to understand. Uh, when it comes to the pilgrims, uh, or the Scrooby group, as we'll refer to them uh, for now, there are a few different important factors to understand. The Scrooby group were a separatist group as opposed to a non-separatist group. Uh, this means that they sought freedom in order to break away from the Church of England. Uh, in short, their beliefs didn't necessarily sync up with those of the Church of England. This caused them to seek asylum in Holland for a short period of time. Uh, but in the end, the group saw a life in the New World as the best solution to their problems. Uh, the group especially wanted to leave Holland because they felt their children were becoming uh, too Dutch. Eventually, plans were drawn up and the group would begin preparing for the long journey across the Atlantic Ocean, which would take place in 1620. Originally, uh, the group was set uh, was to set sail in two ships, uh, on the well-known Mayflower and on the lesser, uh, lesser known Speedwell. Upon discovering the Speedwell was having issues shortly after setting sail, uh, the group transferred as many as they could to the Mayflower and again set out. Uh, this lecture also doesn't necessarily focus on the actual journey of the pilgrims, but it's important to note that during the journey, the columns would lose a member of their group. Uh, surprisingly though, the a pregnant member would give birth during their journey across the Atlantic Ocean increasing their group to the original size of 102. Upon arrival in North America, the group really needed to decide where to settle. Uh, and being that they arrived in North America during the New England winter, the colonists were pressured to quickly make decisions that would inevitably determine if they lived or died. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on them. The colonists eventually agreed upon the former site of Patuxet to settle, uh, which in many ways helped set them up for success. The Patuxet were a native group uh, who were part of the Wampanoag Confederation that were essentially wiped out by the epidemic that would sweep through southern New England before the arrival of the Pilgrims. Uh, in general, this epidemic would heavily increase the pilgrims' chances of survival in multiple ways. This epidemic wiped out uh, the Patuxet, whose former living site would become the home of the pilgrims. Uh, this meant that much of the land that the pilgrims settled on was already cleared of foliage. Uh, this epidemic also hit the Wampanoag in general incredibly hard. They would end up losing a large portion of their population to illness. This would leave the Wampanoag in need of an ally, especially because the arch enemy of the Wampanoag, the Narangan set, were barely touched by this epidemic and had gained a large advantage in numbers uh, over the Wampanoag. Uh, and so the, you know, the, the, the advantage or the alliance between the Wampanoag and the Pilgrims uh, would be incredibly advantageous to the Wampanoag and would last nearly 50 years. 
this would also be a unique period of history uh, where uh, Native Americans and English colonists very much so lived in sync with one another uh, and they could commonly be found amongst one another. Uh, this epidemic gave the pilgrims a clear piece of land to settle on, an incredibly important ally, and the knowledge that their ally possessed pertaining to surviving in southern New England. The pilgrims' first winter in the New World would really prove why these advantages were uh, needed, you know, in the first place. Uh, as half of their population died in the first few months of the establishment of Plymouth. Another incredibly important advantage that the Pilgrims had over other similar colonies, such as Jamestown, was their relationship with the Patuxent native Squanto. Squanto was a former member of Patuxent that had been kidnapped and taken to Europe for a period of five years uh, before making his way back to North America. During his time in Europe, the epidemic would hit southern New England and ended up taking the lives of near, nearly everyone he had known. Uh, upon arrival to the former site of Patuxent, he would have to come to terms with the fact that his life would forever be different and eventually sought asylum with the Wampanoag, who ironically enough uh, ended up keeping him as a prisoner until Massasoit the leader of the Wampanoag made contact with the Pilgrims. Squanto would come in contact with the Pilgrims because Massasoit needed a translator, but he ended up living with the Pilgrims until his death after he eventually met them, uh, which came only a few years after the arrival of English colonists. Squanto would uh, end up becoming a teacher and a friend to the Pilgrims, educating them on agricultural skills as well as other skills that would help them find success in the new world. Squanto is an incredibly important figure in American history and history in general. He's also sadly a commonly uh, marginalized figure when it comes to the history of the pilgrims and the history of the United States. It's very likely that without Squanto the pilgrims would have had similar, a similar fate to those at Jamestown, Virginia, which would inevitably fail. This topic was chosen because on top of it being an incredibly important part of American history, this story better prepares students to understand the cultural genocide of the Native Americans and how Native American communities got to where they are today. When it comes to history, it's vital to understand uh, not just the history itself, but also the root of the historical issues in order to understand our society better today. And since we've mentioned the cultural genocide of the indigenous peoples of North America, it's important to understand how this topic uh, connects back to the overall theme of this lecture. As discussed, the pilgrims would need quite a bit of assistance from Native Americans when they arrived in the New World. Um, in fact, they would need assistance from uh, Natives in one way or another for years into the development of the colony. Uh, as discussed previously, half of the pilgrims would perish within the first few months of life within North America. You know, why is this, why is this though? For one, the pilgrims seem to lack the agri agricultural skills needed to sustainably grow crops in southern New England. Now, which is particularly interesting because Europeans at the time would have had the knowledge necessary to sustain an agrarian-based community. Still, Squanto would teach the pilgrims to farm using various methods of fertilization and also symbiosis. Uh, fish could be used as a fertilizer, as Swanto would teach the pilgrims, uh, and he would also teach the pilgrims to plant uh, squash, beans, and corn together as they benefit one another while they're maturing. Swanto would also teach the pilgrims the politics of New England and the ways in which to communicate with various groups of natives, such as the Narangonset and the Nauset. He would also make the pilgrims aware of potential threats. 
Uh, one example of this is when the Narangan sets, uh, set set the, uh, sent the pilgrims a bundle of arrows wrapped in snakeskin, which was interpreted, interpreted by Squanto as a threat to the colony. Uh, the colonists would in turn send the skin back filled with lead balls. Um, nothing ever happened uh, as a result of this, but it would once again uh, be an example of how vital Squanto was to the colony. It's important to note, though, that Squanto wasn't always just interested in assisting uh, the pilgrims without having a, an agenda of his own. Squanto would at times manipulate the pilgrims and Massasoit into doing his bidding. Uh, however, Massasoit would eventually catch on and demanded Squanto's head and hands from the pilgrims. Although the pilgrims uh, failed to oblige, Squanto would also tell other natives that the pilgrims had various powers that he could uh, manipulate them into using if someone displeased him. Many of these actions would be reported back to Massasoit though uh, uh, through another important marginalized native named Habamak. Uh, Habamak was a shaman of sorts and was sent to live outside of Plymouth in order to report to Massasoit about the happenings of Plymouth Colony. In general, the pilgrims would be happy to accept assistance from Native Americans, um, especially Squanto, in order to make their colony a success and at, and at the very least survive. But through time, this dynamic changed. Uh, as colonists became more self-sufficient and needed less assistance, for, assistance from natives, they began to feel entitled, and more and more land, uh, uh, and uh, they began to feel entitled to more and more land, eventually intruding on the land of native groups. Uh, this would begin a perpetual cycle of European colonists impeding on native lands and violating native rights. This is also what would end the. 50-plus uh, year-long peace between the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag and result in King Philip's War. Uh, this is important to understand because it all connects back to the Pilgrims coming onto shore for the first time to establish Plymouth Colony. Uh, the arrival of the Pilgrims would in many ways uh, spearhead the English colonization of North America and begin the countdown to the eventual cultural genocide of the Native Americans of North of America. Uh, thank you for taking the time to view my lecture this week. Uh, I hope you learned something, and I hope you have a great day.